Okay, good morning, whatever about time we're continuing on. Shekharu Korachayim Simana in Gimel, and Daf Kufava Mudbet of the regular Prince of Mishtabur if Dalit. Maran writes, at Kama and Chashuvim Ketanim, he spoke about your children. A person has one of the kids in the bed with them, the child is sleeping. You, you want to say Shema, and the child is not, doesn't have clothing on. So can you say, can you not say it? I mentioned that for children's specific kula, so now you have to understand how young is considered a katan. How young is considered still a little kid. Says the Mishnah Ras, says the Shukha Aruch rather, Hatinok shanim, the young child until he is 12 years of age, and a young girl until they are 11 years old. Even if they have simane, uh, gadlut, still up to that age, it's mutar. In the last year before the bar mitzvah, <clears throat> if they have simane gadlut, if they have signs of, of maturity and and uh, their body has been developed in that way, then. Uh, you need have sex. It's asur without the have sex. If no have you shte tsarot mutar, then it will be mutar without shte tsarot. But of course, mishnat shlosh esrev elach letinok. Once they are bat or bar mitzvah, they're considered adults. They're not no longer ketanim. Afilu lo have you shte tsarot. Even without um, the bodily signs, so to speak, still would be uh, prohibited. Would be considered asur. To which. Um, the Mishnabura writes in the year of Shlosh Esrev, from the first day that the last year prior to Barabat Mitzvah starts, that's where it is, it's exact date on the calendar. Same is with Barabat Mitzvah and on. Immediately when the day of their bar bat mitzvah comes, then it will be already considered an adult. It will be asur, as we mentioned. Now we're going to start now the next siman siman ayin dalit, which again is um, speaking about erva, but here in this case a person's own erva. We have learned in Masechet Brachot, of course, the, the details of this in Daf Chavdalet, the Gemara discusses um, different things that are considered erva for a person themselves and for being exposed to other people's erva nakedness, what halachically is considered nakedness. And we're going to discuss that right in this siman and the siman after this. So says the Shukharu. Imagine if you're sleeping naked under the, the blanket, you don't have any covering. I want to say Shema. Can you say Shema? Absolutely not. Ah, you, you covered. That doesn't help. You have to have what we call Hefsek ben Libo Be'erva. Shelo Yirei Alevet Ha'erva. So therefore, you have to cover the area of your chest. Above the chest will be separate from below, and will be a half sec between the heart and the erva. Mishum de libo roet erva asur, because otherwise, when the heart, so to speak, is exposed to the erva, that would be asur. And the Roma adds, "Vehu adin im libo roe ervat chavero." If your heart is exposed to the erva of your friend. That would be also asur, as we're going to discuss. So, says the Mishnah Bura. Now, first and foremost, the Bura Lacha over here has a little hakdama to Siman Ayin Dalet, which is a very important hakdama. Hafez Chaim, whenever he feels that you need some background information to fully appreciate and understand the Siman, he gives you a little haktama. Sometimes he does it in Mishnah Bura itself, prior to the Siman, and sometimes he does it in the Biur Halacha. Now, we have also mentioned before that uh, Mishnah Bura is not written just by Hafez Chaim. This was a 30-year project 
30-year project that he embarked together with his son and his son-in-law. So that actually explains some of the um, apparent stirot that you find from one place to another place of, of Nishabura. It's not always necessarily a contradiction. Sometimes uh, there's different authors over there. But nevertheless, this is the Mahalech of the Sefer Mishnabura. Um, so he explains it over here, and I think it's Kedai to quickly go through it and read it together. He writes, Daki Adin Isur He says, This Siman and the following Siman Ain Hey, there are five different categories of Erva, as we will explain one by one. Now, let's go through the five quickly. A, the first one is Enoro Eta Erva. When your eyes could see the erva, that's like simple. Your eyes could see the erva, that, that is you seeing erva. Velo yerae becha erva tavar, the Pasuk says, you should not be able to see erva tavar, and that would be a noro et erva. The second level is liboro et ervato, that your heart sees, is exposed to your erva. Like you wore for Purim costume, you, you wore one of these Arab costumes, the, the costumes, the, the, the whole long thing, and you forgot to wear underwear underneath. So nobody sees your erva. It's completely covered to the ground, right? But inside, everything is exposed. So that's considered libo roe et erva. And the third one would be, or again, it could be like the case of our safe right now that you're sleeping under the blanket and you're completely naked. So that's also the erva. So the third one is gilui erva. The third one is when your erva is exposed, which means you're walking in the house and you're, you're naked. We're not talking about levels of snood over here. We discussed that already in Siman Bet, that a person, the, the laws of snood would dictate that even when a person is changing, nobody mm-hmm. is home, to still be tzanua and do it under the cover as, as much as possible. But imagine if a person is walking naked, even if you stick your head outside the house, so therefore, and, and your heart is covered also, so your heart is covered. You have a whole cover around, wrapped around your chest. So it's not liboro et ha'erva, right? And your house is in a different shoot altogether in a different domain, says the Mishnah Buram. You have no enor liboro et ha'erva. Your eye does not see your erva. Your heart does not see your erva. Im kolze yeshkal isur. Still is asu. You cannot say bracha. Why not? It's not liboro et ha'erva. Your eye doesn't see the erva. Your eye is in a different domain altogether. It's in a different house. So what's the issue? The issue is Mishum Gilui Erva. Because not only you should not be seeing erva, but the Pasuk doesn't say Lo Yir Ebecha Erva Tavar. It says Lo Yira Ebecha Erva Tavar. You should not be seen with, with erva. That means if your erva is exposed to the world, you cannot see, say bracha. So that's the third thing. And again, you see why this is important to categorize the, these things because each one of them is going to have a slightly different halachic ramifications. And you'll very quickly see how this becomes relevant for a person that goes swimming. Or how about a woman that goes to mikveh and needs to say a bracha, right? Or a, a person that is um, you know, coming out of the shower and he's wearing a robe and wants to make a bracha or say shema in a, in a, in a pajama robe for a woman especially, right? Or, or even for a man. So those become very quickly, very relevant. So that, hence you have to know this. Or you want to say, let's say, imagine you go to a shul. I always tell people that the mechitza is one of the underestimated important things in the shuls. 
Because A, aside from Rab Moshe Feinstein, Rab Moshe Feinstein has a tshuva in Igrod Moshe in the first volume in tshuva Lametet and Mem Aleph, right? That's 39 and 41, the one apart from each other, in which he writes and he holds based on the Gemara in Masechet Sukkah Daf Nun Aleph, on page 51 of Masechet Sukkah, he understands that the concept of Mechitza in the Shul is a biblical concept without which is Asur biblically to daven in the Shul. Right? That would become a very severe thing if you don't have proper mechitza. And he, of course, holds that the mechitza has to be high enough. It has to be 5.3, 5.4, 4, 5, uh, foot tall, and so on. He, but he holds that mechitza could be see-through. It could be a piece of glass on top, complete glass to see-through. Or the whole thing could be glass, even, according to Moshe Feinstein. It's a divider, right? So... And imagine like you have that, or you have <clears throat> well those mechitzos like like the one that 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 you see here in this structure. But imagine if the top part would be see through, right? And the top part would see through. Then you don't have an issue of mechitza, but you have another issue of seeing the erva. In other words, if everyone comes sniut in in the in the bet knesset, then you're good, you're fine. But if you have What's halachically considered erva exposed, which as we're going to learn very quickly, it could be sarba isha erva, it could be uncovered hair of a woman, certainly arms um, until the 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 um, the elbow is considered erva, the areas below the the, the neckline uh, will be considered chest in 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 halachic view, that would be erva. And so, so there's a whole lot of what's considered erva without us necessarily calling them an erva. Halacha calls them erva. And hence, you'll, you'll have a real issue with this. You can't say brachot and tefilot in front of, in, in front of it. And we'll have soon a three-way machlokata poskim, whether or not you closing your eyes would help that or should you be turned away and so on so you see how important this could become in a halach in a halachic discussion hence the divisions that are made by hafetz chaim so that's the third one the fourth one is if your eye does not see your own erva you're completely covered but your friend is naked so your eye could be seeing or it's exposed, let's call it exposed, because as we will see later, according to sample scheme, you closing your eyes doesn't do at all anything, because you're still exposed to erva until you turn away from the erva, right? So let's call it being exposed to it until we cover the machloketa achronim, machloketa poskim. So if you are, your eyes are exposed to the erva of your friend, of another person, the en chiluk ben ervat Yisrael or akum, and there's no difference between a yid or a goy, right? If your eyes are, are exposed to the erva, can you say bracha? Can you say, you know, you're saying birkat shachar you're walking in the street on Shabbat, and uh, there is somebody that's not dressed properly, jogging, walking in the street, can, and you're saying birkat shachar can you continue saying bracha? How about the picture, a billboard? You know, those are all things that, unfortunately, we have to deal with, you know, with arvu bagoim, we're mixed with, with, with the a culture that's very much not aligned with, um, with these areas of halakha, so it says the Mishnah Bura, the Bura Halakha, Ba'afiru katan ben tesha v'ketana b'at shalosh, even an erva of a katan which is eight years old, or a ketana, a, a, a little girl that's three years and up, is considered erva. Right? You have um, a, a, and this is again, the sensitivity that people have to develop in bringing kids into the men's section, when they're not dressed properly, could immediately pose a halachic problem with all the people who are davening if she's not dressed properly and it is exposed in an area that will be halachically called the erva. Take that with a, a big grain of salt because you have to come back to this erva of katan. Okay? I'm just setting off alarms right now based on what he's saying. We have to discuss each one of these. Um, so for now, he said three years and up. Right, that's what he said. Now you have to also discuss. You know, a mohel is doing the brit mila, right? You say a bracha, and you're dealing with the erva. So should you be saying the bracha like this? You know, turning away, and that's it could, could cause some uh, 
some delay, if not danger, for the little baby there. So if erva ve katan like that, is that considered erva? Is that not considered erva? Do you have to, huh? That's another thing, or you're mesader kidushin, right? And everyone is half naked under the chupa, right? So can, can, can you say bracha? Can you not say bracha? These are serious things. And there's a story with Chahav Obadiah. He himself actually is mekel. In the tshuva that he has, another, did he ever just close your eyes and say the bracha with closed eyes? Uh, or look into the sudduk, whatever, cover your eyes. But um, there's a story of his, which I said once before, that he was he was uh, he was um, asked to do a uh, a wedding. I believe it was in Argentina, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, he went there, and the, the, this is was the, the, one of the big biggest billionaires, and very much connected with the mayor of the city and the the, the governor and uh, all the goyim and Jews, all the Hashuva people were there. And everybody walks in, says so everyone is not dressed properly. And he goes out, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> he flew him in. There's a whole story behind it. And Rabbi Tzchak Yosef was saying this story to us. Um, and he was, he took him, he took him along with him. And, uh, you know, people, he said, Rabbi Tzchak Yosef said, I was a young, I was cringing. I was like, the hundreds of people in there. What do you mean you're not doing it? Like, I mean, it's time for, so I said, what happened was the, the mayor of the city, the boy, he asked, so what's up? Why is it delayed? Why I was waiting? Why, why is the rabbi not coming? So the rabbi is unhappy that people are not dressed properly. He says, he he says the rabbi is right. He says, the rabbi is right. It's a holy place. The chupa is a holy place. We should get shawls and everyone should wear shawls like they're under, 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 under thing. So he said, this was like an amazing thing that all the rabbinim came to Chaum, but yeah, afterwards they said, you know, for years we've been trying to do this in Norway. Now that this this was like the wed wedding of the century, <clears throat> and the mayor said this, so now it's easy to maintain a certain standard for at least the time, the duration of, of Chupa and so on and so forth. But again, this is, Haravadia himself very much uh, sympathizes with the situation that sometimes you know, it's not in your hand, you're trying to do something good, and uh, you, you, you're, um, you're placed in, in that situation, so, again, as we will discuss, this is going to be a three-way machlok at the poskim, and Chacha Obadi is, the, you know, he sides me karatin with the most lenient opinion that you could just close your eyes, even though the, technically your face, your eyes are exposed to Erba. So says, Chafetz Chaim, that's the fourth one, and the fifth and final one is Liboro E, Ervat Chaviru, that your heart, your eyes are not exposed to any erva, your heart is not exposed to your own erva, but your heart is exposed to erva of somebody else, to ervat chavir, which is what we just explained quickly in the in the uh, in the shukharuch over here. That a person could be under the blanket, somebody else is under the blanket as well, and <clears throat> your lev is roe ervat chaviru. So. Which means or When your eyes are exposed to erva, whether your own erva or somebody else's erva, then that's asur from the Torah. Why? Because it's clear cut in the pasuk, right? If your eyes are, are seeing or exposed to erva, any area that's considered erva, right? So that, if it's real erva from the Torah, that will be a real isur from the Torah, right? If it will be a erva the Rabbanan, then it will be a isur the Rabbanan, of course, right? And we'll discuss as we develop this sugya into Siman Ayin Hey, we'll see that everything that we say pre of our woman, for instance, that's not covered fully, is not necessarily all the oraita. There are areas that are considered erva the oraita. There are areas that are considered erva the Rabbanan, as we will discuss with Zatashem. But... Technically speaking, you're talking about the Torah level because it says, um, right. We'll discuss, right? Technically speaking, not certainly not the same way, but we'll discuss what 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 other areas aside from the the. Um, uh, the actual er area of erva could potentially be considered a problem, right? 
So it says the the Biranacha Nikro Kriyat Shema or La Sok Padi Bratura to read Kriyat Shema to say a bracha or to even be learning Torah or any divrek tusha, that would be a problem. And therefore, if you are saying Shema and you see an erva passing in front of you, that would be um, an Isur You have to stop saying Shema if there's an erva over there, right? Boadin, kol davar shubikusha. It's not just Shema, any davar shubikusha, it will be a problem, right? Now, the Ben Shai brings a Mekor. How do you know that this is um, for any Davar Shabi Kedusha? says, because in the beginning of the Pasuk, it says, Ki Hashem Elokecha mitalech bekerev machanecha. Hashem travels throughout your encampment. Vaya machanecha kadosh. And your machane should be kadosh. Right? And the kerev machanecha, Chazal learned from this, that um, when when a person is doing Kriyat Shema. It's a drasha that the Gemara gives on this pasuk is is the time that um, the people are saying Shema and Tefillah and Divrei Torah. So therefore, you see from here, Kadosh, is going back on Shema or saying Divrei Torah, Esek uh, Torah, and so on and so forth. So that's how Ben Shai explains the. Um, the sequence of the pasu, how it's juxtaposed together, and hence um, the isur of, of saying Shema, learning Torah, Tefillah, and Brachot, and any Davar Shemitusha, while a person is exposed to uh, the Erva. And the second thing is, the Kafachayim writes, and Ben Ishchai as well, that if you're saying Shema, or other things of the Barim Shemitusha, and um, the erva is in front of you, then you're over an isur ase. You're over an isur ase of ki Hashem melokecha mitalech bekerav machanecha vaya machanecha kadosh. It's not just lo yirai v'chayr v'adam, but vaya machanecha kadosh. You're over on a positive mitzvah. The Hashem says your machane, your surrounding should be kadosh, and this is a lack of kedusha because the pasuk itself says what's considered lack of kedusha lo yirai v'chayr v'adam. You should not see. So that would be a, a, a Isur de Oraita, a Isur Ase, as the Kapachai Rabbi Meshachai explained it. So that basically is the gist of the, the, the beginning of the Bira Lacha, even though there's more, we'll decide if we're going to do the rest of the Bira Lacha, and Bezat Hashem will continue this in the days to come.